So the question that I get asked the most is how did you know? How did you find out? Um, you're so young, you didn't go in for a scan, how did you know? So let's go ahead and backtrack. It is a fully loaded question, um, but I do need to give some background context. So about two years ago, um, I noticed that I had like a lump in my right breast. Now I've had a history with cysts, so I didn't really think anything of it. Um, and it got smaller and then it grew. And when it did grow back, um, it started being very painful. And when I mean painful, like when I wore a bra, it was hurting and it was starting to impact my daily life. So I went to the doctor and I said, Hey, like I got this pain in my, right, in my right breast. And the doctor actually told me at first, like, um, Oh, okay. You, it's probably fibroadenoma. I think that's how you say it. Um, anyways. And you know, if you had breast cancer, it's probably not super, super painful. Um, so I wouldn't really worry about it. It's pretty hard. Like when I would feel like I could feel the the lump, you know, and it was hard and it felt like a ball, um, which was kind of interesting because, you know, they normally say that breast cancer is like all jagged and like abnormal and it doesn't always hurt. Um, I don't know if that's true or not, but they made it, they, they calmed my nerves, I guess, at that moment. Um, and they're like, oh, you'll just have surgery. You know, you can get it removed. So I'm like, okay, I wasn't totally tripping, but you know, there's that feeling deep down inside where you're like, I just know something is wrong. And I had that feeling. I was like, I just have that gut feeling. Like, I just know something's wrong. So they're like, okay, we'll put in a referral for you. Um, just get it like an ultrasound on it. So I'm like, okay, awesome. Um, so I go to the doctors like a month later, by the way, a month later. Um, and I get an ultrasound right away. They were like, we need to rush you in. Like, we need to get you a mammogram now. Something does not look right. And I'm like, oh, like I start panicking. I'm like, okay. So they do the ultrasound. They're like, okay, this doesn't, this doesn't look normal. Like this looks abnormal. It could be nothing, but you know, the amount of rush that they put into it and kind of like the urgency, um, I started to freak out. Literally within 15 minutes of the ultrasound, I was in a mammogram. Now keep in mind too that I'm a little bit more on like the conservative side where I don't really want to show like my body to people, <laughs> which I'm sure a lot of people can relate to. So this whole experience was pretty traumatic in general, just because you're kind of like getting moved around and tossed around the different like medical departments, like fully exposed. So that in itself was traumatic, along with the idea that like I'm getting bumped around. I get the mammogram. They're like, things aren't looking good. Within 30 minutes, I kid you not, or 15, 20 minutes, I don't know, it all happened so fast. Keep in mind that my entire duration that I was there was like an hour and a half to two hours. So all of this is happening back to back to back. So I had the ultrasound, then a mammogram. They're like, we need to take a biopsy today, right now. And I'm like, today, right now? Like, wait, what? Like, you're cutting me open. And like, I just found out, like, you know, that I something looks wrong. Like, what is happening? It was really scary. And I'm like, I told them, I'm like, I need a minute. You know, I went to the bathroom and I just stayed in there for a little while. Like, I asked for some water and I was not feeling good. You know, the mind, the body, everything is connected. And sorry, if you are a TMI person, if you're a TMI person, you might as well just go ahead and like log out of this video now. <laughs> if you're okay with TMI, like, let's just go ahead and continue with this. Um, but anyways, so I'm like in the bathroom and of course everything is connected and it is just, I am so nervous. And I'm just like stuck in the bathroom because my stomach is hurting and everything's all bad. And then finally they're like knocking on the door. They're like, are you okay? You know? And I'm like, yeah, like I'm okay. I'm coming out. So I go out, I'm on the table and just right there, you know, like they gave me the shot. They, you know, numbed it for me. And then they took the biopsy and they were like, oh, we see something in your underarm or whatever. And I'm like, okay uh, what, you know, I'm like, I don't know anything about breast cancer. Like I'm 29 at the time. And I'm like, or 28, 
actually, no, I was 29. Yeah, yeah, I was 29. 28 when it started, um, when I had the first symptoms, and then 29 was the official diagnosis. But anyways, getting sidetracked. So they took the biopsy in my breast, and they also took it in the lymph nodes on my right underarm. And um, they're like, you know, it could be nothing. Just wait. Hold on a second. You know, um, we got to send it to the labs, but like it could be cancerous. And I just freaking panicked. In full transparency, I kept my, oh, sorry, I'm not allowed to cuss on YouTube. I kept my together, but I was panicking. I was like, oh no. I was like, I had a new job. I hadn't even been at my job for like a year yet. I had a good paying job and I was finally getting myself back on my feet. And I was like, cancer. It is not the time in my life for this. <laughs> in addition, I had just started like a brand new relationship <laughs> and it was fresh and you know, we were still in our honeymoon phase. And that changed real quick. But that's not obviously part of this whole story right now. That's a different story. But anyways. So, I'm like not the time for that. Just really not the time. And I'm like, okay. So I had to wait a couple days, but the way that I found out just really, I don't know. I know there's no good way to do it, but I found out via phone call. So I was at work and my phone was ringing and I am a teacher. And so I just silenced it. And then I realized that something was wrong because they didn't leave a voice memo. They just kept calling. And they called two more times. And then they left a voice memo like, Brittany, call us back. Here's the number. Here's my name, whatever. So I'm like, okay. So I call back. It was not my doctor. Um, it was, I didn't even know who my doctor or my team was at that moment, but it was a lady. And, um, she said the results came back and you have cancer just like that she said i'm sorry um and it has spread to your lymph nodes and i just was devastated i told her i said oh my gosh like i i am panicking and she said take a deep breath and obviously i was still at work and it happened so fast like I felt like I was in a dream. Um, everything was blurry around me. Like I was very disoriented. I felt like I was going to pass out. Like I just, when you get hit with news like that, I don't know how people are supposed to respond, but I was like, I was, I was just like, what is happening? I was in complete shock and I had a feeling you know, it was coming, but I also didn't realize that because it was spread to my lymph nodes, then it was like moving around the body, you know, like I also didn't take these things into consideration as well. Like I just didn't know. So I ran over to the principal of my school and I said, Hey, um, I have to go home. <laughs> I need to go home now. Um, I was supposed to go into a meeting and I was like, I just can't, I can't do it. I just found out that I had cancer. And I just said it like that. I said, I don't know what's going to happen. Like I was nearly crying to her and she was, God bless her. Like, seriously, she was the best in that moment. She's like, you know, I just want to let you know that you're not going to lose your job and we're here to support you, like whatever you need, you know, and she was just so comforting and so nice about it in that moment. And that's really what I needed. And I, I guess like the first person to tell, like, I didn't anticipate it being my boss, <laughs> but it was just because the circumstance when you're in like a panic state of mine, you're not really thinking about things. And it just kind of like just word vomited out, I guess. Um, and then the next few days, um, you know, I had to make the phone call to my family. And I think that was one of the most challenging parts of everything, I would say, is telling my friends and family 
it is weird. And I'm going to make another video in the future about how it affects your relationships. But, oof, yeah. It is not easy telling your friends and family, let me tell you. And there are people, I've been to a breast cancer support group, and there are some people who have decided not to tell their friends and family. And they don't want to tell anybody because of how it's going to impact them. I personally am glad that I told. However, it was not easy. Um, but anyways, <laughs> moving it along. So after I told everybody, then I went in for my like doctor appointment and, um, I met my care team and it was like a four hour appointment. I went and I met my oncologist. I met the surgeons. I met just like everybody on my team, um, my social worker, um, you know, it was, it was a long day. It was a long day. Um, my ex-boyfriend at the time was there and my sister was on FaceTime listening as well. And, um, it was just like a journey for sure. Um, it was heavy. It was heavy. And there was a lot of information. I kept my notepad the entire time, like taking notes. And again, it was nice to have like some other people there as well to help remember things because I was in shock. And so after that, they're like, you know, we have to have a PET scan um, to see if it spread through your body. So I'm like, Ooh, okay. So at this time, they're like, we need to do a PET scan. We need to get you into IVF right away because you're not going to be able to have kids. And then you're like, hold on a second. I just found out I had cancer. And now you're telling me that I'm not going to be able to have kids. And I need to go through IVF. Hold up. Like, what? They're like, yeah. And keep in mind, I was also terrified of needles, which again, I'll make it another video about like how I had to overcome that <laughs> real quick. Um, but anyways, so I'm like, oh my gosh, like it was happening so fast. So anyways, I had my... um my liver biopsy or sorry, I had my PET scan and then I had to go in for a liver biopsy because they saw something on my PET scan and they're like, Oh, if there are spots in your neck, there are spots in your liver. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, it's one thing to hear like you have cancer, but then there's another thing to hear that it was stage four cancer. And guess where I found that out? I opened up the results at work again. You guys, I really don't recommend doing that. Don't, don't open up test results at work. Be alone. Or I mean, not be alone. Be, be at home. There we go. Be at home in a comfortable space, preferably with friends or family or alone, whatever, whatever you want. But I, I don't recommend doing it at work. But at that time, you know what? It was not any easier than hearing the first one, the first news. I was like, you know what? At this rate, whatever. Um, I'm going to go through treatment and it's going to, it is what it is. Stage four, stage three, stage two, stage one, whatever. I was praying and I was hoping that I wasn't stage four, but now that I got the result, I'm like, all right, it is what it is. There's nothing that I can do about it now. So then I went in and, and I did my two weeks of IVF and did my egg retrieval. And right after that, I started treatment. I was on, um, so I never actually, by the way, did um, ra um, radi radiation. That's the word. Sorry. I never did radiation. I never did chemotherapy. They put me on targeted um, therapy, which was through the oral chemotherapy department or whatever, because mine was, um, HER2 negative with estrogen and progesterone for whatever positive. So hormone positive and then HER2 negative. So they put me on, um, Lupron. Um, so that's a shot once a month. And then they put me on eye brands, 125 milligrams. And then they put me on uh, tamoxifen. 
and Zomata. And of course, like a bunch of like vitamins and stuff for your bones. And keep in mind, I started all of this in a matter of a week. And that first week was brutal. Like my lab results were like all of my blood work, my white blood cells up here. And then you can just see in a matter of like a couple weeks, it just dropped literally to the bottom of the scale. And so of course, like my body was not used to it. Keep in mind, I was also like a very healthy person. I was at the gym, like I did Orange Theory like two to three times a week. And, you know, I was doing everything that you're supposed to do. Like I was a healthy eater and I was exercising and, you know, I'm doing all of these things that they say oh, prevents cancer. And you know what? If you get cancer and you felt like you were doing something wrong because of that time, like it is what it is. You probably weren't, you know, like cancer just sucks and people just get it for lots of reasons. And maybe it's just genetic or whatever. Um, anyways, so that's something that I had to grapple and put in my mind as well of like, I was like, I have done something wrong, but I'm like, I really didn't like, I was just dealt a bad card, you know? So anyways, um, I'm like, okay. So I start treatment and it was brutal. I did not enjoy tamoxifen. Of course, um, you know, they tell you that you're going to go through menopause and all of these different things right away. Um, but going through it is like a whole other experience. My body, the first three months, I would say was, oh my gosh, flipped upside down. I was going through menopause. I was having really, really bad cramps, really bad hot flashes. Like I would wake up in the middle of the night, change my clothes because I was sweating so much. And then I would have to, um, change again. Like I would sweat through like multiple clothes. Um, and it did get easier, a little bit easier. It never gets easy, <laughs> but it did get better after the first three months. Um, and I was just like, oh, this is just so hard. Like my first three months of my body adjusting to the medication was really hard. When eventually my body was pronounced like officially into menopause, they switched me from letrozole. I mean, they switched me from tamoxifen to letrozole. Um, like, and I, I had a little bit of a better response with that. However, um, you'll find out later on in this video that I'm actually changing that. But anyways, so keep in mind, I was still working this entire time. I was taking so many sick days though, but I did manage to keep my job I did take a little bit of a medical leave, um, but overall I kept my job. I kept working full time. My job was really patient with me and understanding, and they still are, about the abundance amount of time that I take off and the calling in sick. And I'm just really blessed in that aspect. Um, I know some jobs I've heard from other patient, cancer patients or thrivers, survivors, whatever you want to call yourself is totally valid. Um, I've heard that some jobs are not as flexible and nice about it. Um, mine, thankfully, were. I had a very, very good support system um, with friends and family. And going through the treatment um, has not been easy. Um, I've had to learn how to advocate for myself. Um, I'm still on this treatment. However, my PET scans have showed up and it is smaller every time I have a PET scan, which is really good. Um, I have learned how to live my life. <laughs> I've learned how to live my life on these medications. The third week of the eye brand cycle is always the worst. Um, I did have instances where I was, you know, on 125 milligrams of eye brands and it was really hard. And I was like passing out, like I'm a tinier person. I'm like 115 pounds. I'm only like five, three. So maybe the medication just hit me a little bit more because I'm like smaller. Um, but I had to decrease my dosage, which brought a lot of other anxiety. Um, I decreased it down to 100 milligrams. Um, and then I decreased a little bit of my um, hormone treatment um, as well, but not by much. That was just the Lupron because um, I'm having extremely terrible 
bone pain, which we'll get to. Um, but anyways, I kind of felt like I learned how to cope and learned how to live with it. And then, you know, recently, now I'm on like a different journey. Um, I'm experiencing very, very bad joint pain. Um, to the point where I wake up in the morning and I can no longer move my hands. And we've already decreased the dosages. We've already tested all of my blood work. They thought that it was a thyroid issue because there was a spot that came up in the scan. The thyroid blood results came back and they're totally fine. Um, and <laughs> recently, which is going to be for another video though, I had a trip to the like ER and We've made a decision now that this week I am actually taking a week off of all medications and then we are switching from letrozole to andazitrol, and and I don't know. I'll let you guys know in a future video <laughs> what the changes have been. But we're keeping the eye brands the same. We're just changing the medication of the, um, the hormone therapy. So if you have any questions or if you feel like I left something out, please let me know in the comment section. Um, I feel more ready to talk about um, more details and stuff now. So I'm going to be posting a little bit uh, more videos. I took a break for a second just because life is hard sometimes. Um, but... I will be logging as well. I'll keep my log of videos um, to hopefully help people. Um, again, if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section and I'll do my best to answer them. Again, I'm not a doctor though. I'm just only speaking from personal experience. But thanks for sticking it through. If you are a breast cancer survivor, thriver, I'm going through your journey right now. Um, I wish you peace. And... Um, Understand that you are not alone in whatever you are going through. And anything that you are going through symptom-wise is valid. So thanks, guys. Bye.